Okay, I think we can start now with the second talk of this afternoon, which will be in Sochi in the Sirius Center. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Mikhail Tiaglov. He's from the Shanghai and the Jiaotong University. Uh, and his talk will be about polynomial solutions of linear differential operators and Bochner's theorem. Please, uh, Mikhail. Thank you, Walter. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers to invite me uh, here. Well, uh, my talk will be more or less elementary because uh, the practice of giving talks on this, on, on this topic at some seminars to just show that uh, the technique that I'm trying to explain with a lot of results leads to some you know, misunderstanding probably. So I decided to choose the most simple example of what we are doing and just revise what uh, uh, Bochner did, also with some some, uh, some funny uh, discoveries. Uh, well, just some some models uh, element. Okay. Well, first of all, uh, I just want to remind you the paper by uh, uh, by Bochner. When we uh, uh, when we read this paper with my co-author um, Alexander Dichenko, we were surprised to find out that uh, Bochner, from the very beginning, he posed very specific problems. So actually, first of all, he considered these differential equations. I will, I will just, on the next slide, I will, I will explain more. I mean, just uh, it will be better for to see. He considered differential equation, the spectral problem of the second order, differential operator of second order with polynomial coefficients, and he, his initial problem was to find polynomial coefficients p0, p1, p2 such that, such that the, uh, this eigenvalue problem uh, has infinite sequence of uh, eigenvalues corresponding to infinite sequence of polynomial eigenfunctions and such that nth polynomial has degree n. So this is the, his only problem. So he didn't talk about any orthogonality or something like this. Maybe he kept in mind probably, but he never wrote in this paper such something like this. But he, and he, he claimed that he found all the uh, such sequences. However, it's strange, but in the same paper, he missed some sequences, satisfying his initial problem. <laughs> so uh, here, just uh, his problem is rewritten. Yes, we have an operator, a differential uh, eigenvalue problem. And, and uh, his problem was to find coefficients, p0, p1, p2, such that this sequence has, uh, I mean, uh, this problem has uh, infinite sequence of again functions, uh, polynomial again functions with uh, this property. So nth polynomial has degree n. Okay. First of all, he showed that this is the uh, only possible situation in this case. This means that if we have uh, p0 of degree more than 2, p1 of degree more than 1, or p2 of degree more, more than 0, then uh, the solution of this problem is impossible. So that's what he did first. And then he uh, wrote about five, five cases. So the first case, it's a operator, differential operator of order one. So he ha here he has only, well, binomials. The next case, the uh, next case is he actually, he um, classified by the uh, singular points, right? So actually, here's a coefficient, coefficients of the second uh, derivative. So he considered this a case, the, the, the Hermitian case, right? The Laguerre case in DC, he wrote, without any explanation, by the way, so that he wants to exclude these values of delta, OK? And uh, here's the Laguerre case, but these numbers. And uh, uh, the next four, uh, two cases, so Bessel, he just mentioned the, uh, probably the for the first time in this paper that these polynomials have relation with the Bessel function, so that's probably why uh, Kral called it Bessel polynomials. And he excluded here these numbers. Okay? And uh, uh, for Jacobi polynomials, he excluded such uh, numbers for delta and epsilon. And the only case where he gave any explanation is the Bessel case. He considered uh, 
uh, he, he explained that if epsilon is one of these numbers and delta is zero, then as he wrote, we have non-uniqueness. Okay, this means actually one eigenvalue has two eigenfunctions, but well, it's still the solution to, to his problem initially. And the second case is quite curious. He wrote that uh, it may happen if delta is non-zero and epsilon is in, uh, one of these numbers, so zero, minus one, minus two, et cetera. He wrote that uh, in this case, we have a lack of some powers, okay? Well, uh, we, uh, with my uh, co-author, in fact, solve some more general problems, and uh, here's some kind of particular case, but it's quite curious that our, I cannot say it's, a vi it's approach, it's a vision, so it's just another point of view on this problem, polynomial solutions of differential operators, gives us some, as we think, remember, more or less good explanation of all these specific cases and about the, the whole Bochner problem. So, uh, we start with uh, some differential operator with polynomial coefficients. But additionally, we suppose that uh, the coefficient uh, at the function itself, q0, actually is 0 at 0 because we just move all the constant to the uh, eigenvalues, okay? And, well, we consider polynomial uh, uh, equation of this form, not only in fact, not only, but okay, for today I will talk about this one. So it's uh, just a spectral problem, okay? And we find polynomial eigenfunctions for such a differential operator, okay? Well, our in initial problem was to find any possible operators with polynomial eigenfunctions, any number, at least one, okay? So, but uh, again, today we'll talk about the specific case. So we introduced for classification this number. For the very beginning we called it a rising degree number, but later we read this, some, uh, some uh, researchers called it Fuchs number, Fuchs index. So NG, NG is the, the largest, uh, it's the degree of the J coefficient uh, polynomial. And uh, why we call it rising degree number? Because the operator x from, if, if this is fixed, some number n, n capital, and consider all uh, the set of all complex polynomials of degree at most n capital, then operator LR x from Cn to Cn plus m, in a generic situation, of course. So m can be negative at most, at, at least my, my, my minus r, but it can be negative. And in this case, we have that polynomial has eigenvalue zero with polynomial eigenfunctions, but the only eigenvalue zero. Well, we almost describe, almost we will have full description of this case, but I skip it for today again. Uh, <coughs> this case, m is greater than r, the order of the operator. In this case, all operators, lr, with any coefficients, they always increase degree. It doesn't mean that they have no polynomial functions. They have in some situations, but uh, only finitely many. And, uh, well, some specific forms. And in the case, probably the most interesting between m is between 0 and r. In this case, we can always find at least one, maybe more, uh, differential operators that x from cn to cn. For a fixed n, by the way, so if we change n, I mean, for example, we just uh, take n is equal to 5, well, it doesn't mean that it will not, will, will, will preserve the degree of polynomial of degree 10. No. But 5 or less, yes. Larger than f 5, no. So it's just some specific situation for a fixed n, okay? In this situation, we have polynomial eigenfunctions, uh, most of them of, of the same degree. So, and it may happen, maybe they have, um, also may have some other, probably infinitely many polynomial eigenfunctions, but uh, with a lack of degrees. So actually, it's not a solution, again, of the Bochner's problem. Uh, in this case, <laughs> just, just for fun, I just want to show you to my favorite example. It's a biconfluent uh, Hoyne operator. In this case, it, it has, for a fixed n, it has exactly n plus one polynomial good functions, all of them of the say degree n, and they are orthogonal with the Hermitian weight on the real line. And uh, they are actually in the space C, Cn of z, they are actually the basis. So because of orthogonality, well, just, uh, you know, the situation of this case. But Bochner said that his only case is m equals zero, possible, okay? So in general, well, it's, it's not our result, it's actually a well-known result, but anyway, so uh, if m is non-zero, then the operator 
doesn't solve Bochner problem at all in any situation. Uh, so it's better to consider this for, for the Bochner's problem, it's better to consider m equals zero. Uh, what we did with the, our operator, so we fixed number n and uh, restrict the operator to the space Cn. And we obtain what? We obtain a finite dimensional operator, right? So actually we take the, for example, coefficients of, give, of a given, given polynomial's vector. So we have just operator from, n plus, from the space of dimension plus one to the space dimension plus, one, uh, plus m, right? So we have a matrix representation. And this matrix will be of the very specific form. It's a band matrix of at most r plus one diagonals. And uh, uh, well, it's, uh, if m is non-zero, it's a rectangular matrix. Okay, well, so in fact, when we're searching of polynomial solutions, we're searching for some uh, eigenvectors and uh, eigenvalues for, for a given matrix. Uh, matrix is very interesting because uh, it has, depending on R, it, 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 it has, uh, its coefficients are polynomials in index, okay, of a certain uh, degree, okay? And uh, the most interesting situation, of course, will be just triangular, for example, matrix. They appear exactly in the case when m is between 0 and r. And we have a lot of examples that these triangular matrices will be just matrices for discrete orthogonal polynomials. Okay? But it's a different story uh, because I want to stop on the case m equals 0. And this is the only situation where the matrix is square and upper triangular. And actually, it's one of the, of the ex uh, explanations wh why only this case can solve uh, Bochner's prob problem. Okay, so uh, because you see, if I have a sequence, if we suppose that operator has a sequence of polynomials with a you know degree, uh, nth polynomial has degree n, and we take the coefficients as vectors and construct a matrix, it should be triangular matrix, upper triangular. So we have such a situation for a fixed n. Moreover, <coughs> if we increase m, if we I mean increase n, so suppose n is less than m. And they take the same eigenvectors for an, for an n and add some zeros. This will be eigenvectors for the for the largest uh, for the large, la, la, larger matrix. So this means actually that our operator has exactly infinite sequence of polynomial solutions. Okay. Uh, what is a bad situation? Bad situation for a Bochner's problem is if we have eigenvalues which are multiple and uh, the geometric multiplicity is less than algebraic multiplicity. This exactly means uh, this is the only situation where we, we have a lack of degrees, that which is Bochner, Bochner excluded. Okay? Well, uh, let me return back to the Bochner's initial problem. This is his operator, and the corresponding matrix for a fixed n is of this form. Again, we can change n, and the first polynomials will be the same, so it's okay. And we have here, you see, quadratic, quadratic, and quadratic dependence on i. But for some particular cases, for this situation, we have bidiagonal matrix with uh, linear dependence. Okay? For this case, for, for a Hermitian case, we have tridiagonal matrix. But you see, we can make this 0, right? Because a1 is 0. This is exactly the uh, Hermitian case. So we also can think about this matrix as bidiagonal if, if necessary. We can change variables, such it's, it's okay. The uh, Laguerre case, well, you see, after change of variables, we can make this zero, so the matrix will be bidiagonal. And this exceptional numbers of the, of the Bochner, exceptional numbers on the Bochner mean that, you see, we have here uh, quadratic dependence. So this means that we have here zeros. And this means what? We have blocks. So these exceptional cases are blocks of, of Bochner, uh, <coughs> blocks of the, of the matrix. So we have, in fact, some polynomials like P0, P1, et cetera, PK. Then we have XK plus 1. And then we have XK plus 1 times, say, Q1 of degree 1, XK plus 1 times Q2, et cetera. You can check. For example, for Laguerre, yeah, if you take the uh, alpha minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, of course, one of the Laguerre's will be exactly monomial, up to a constant. And, uh, well, some similar situation can, can appear here. So I just excluded a to 0 because it's, um, it's better to see. So it's by diagonal matrix. But here we have a problem. 
here, because from the previous case, we, we eigenvalues are linear on index. Here, they quadratic. So in fact, we can have multiple eigenvalues. And for the multiple eigenvalues, we have two situations. One situation is that, for example, uh, two eigenvalues are the same. It's, it's easy to show that we have two, 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 two. And if there is a zero, for example, we have a block. One block with a distinct eigenvalues and another block. With a, and the same situation is there. Also, we have a monomial. So this is the exceptional case that uh, Bochner uh, <coughs> excluded. And the bad situation is that, suppose, for example, that all the, these subdiagonals is non-zero, but eigenvalues are multiple. So we have missed, so, so we have missed some polynomial eigenfunctions. I mean, the matrix will have an eigenvector and a generalized eigenvector. But for the operator, the generalized eigenfunction will be not a polynomial, in fact. So we just have a lack of the degree. So this is the uh, situation, this explanation of what happens with the, uh, the Bochner case. But you see the general formula for, for, the, for Jacobi still still OK, but with some exceptional numbers, even Jacobi will be just a monomial. And then we have monomial multiplied by another, by another Jacobi, so it's like such a situation. OK, so how oh, oh, long time? So I have 15 minutes or 10 minutes, right? 10 minutes. Ten. OK. So, um, so I, this means I can show some examples. Uh, in general situation, we have similar thing. Of course, our matrix will be just R diagonal, right? But in fact, it's always, except such a, such a pro problematic situation, we have for degree of order three, four, five, everything we have polynomial, I mean, solutions to Bochner's problem, okay? So uh, Kral, uh, both Kral's and Little John, they uh, try to find uh, orthogonal polynomials, okay? So, but not all, but they, they found uh, possibility that the operator can be uh, factorized, or symmetrized, sorry, and uh, multiplied by a function. And then we ha they have, uh, they found um, all, they described all possible situations of even operators of even order, where we just by multiplication of function, we can symmetrize them. But it doesn't mean that other, uh, other sequences are not orthogonal. So it's just not found, okay? But they exist, except this, uh, uh, this exceptional case with multiple eigenvalues and other things. Okay, so for the multiple eigenvalues also we have, but such a tricky situation. So and uh, here the general, general uh, problem when I change variables, so it's a to zero maybe non-zero. So that says that uh, uh, this is if and only if we have a solution to a Bochner problem for this operator. So only for possible situations. So this means that we have degree here less than 2. Here degree is 2, but we have no exceptional situations. And here we have exceptional situations, multiple eigenvalues probably. But uh, this means that we have correct blocks. So we always have an infinite sequence of polynomials with the correct degree, so without any lack of degrees. OK? Uh, and the last interesting and funny case, uh, we, get, we, we got two uh, uh, bi bi diagonal triangular matrices. For them, we can find a general formula for the coefficients. Okay? So as you can see, this general formula works for all classical orthogonal polynomials, including, and also for, for binomials too. It's the same formula. It depends on what we, are, what, what we want to do. So for example, if you consider binomials, okay? For binomials, we have that ti i will be just i times a11 one one, and ti i plus 1 will be i plus 1 a10. One so if you substitute to this formula to find the coefficients, we will get binomials, in fact. So because it's a product, we have um, j minus i. Here we have i plus 1 i from 0 to k minus 1 is a coefficient, right? And in fact, a11 over a10. So it's exactly will be j choose k, a11 over a10 to the power k. OK? So if you want, uh, I don't know, if you, if you want, say, Laguerre, 
that's OK. The similar situation, so for, for, for the Laguerre, we have, let me write here, for the Laguerre, we have TII is equal to minus i, and TI i plus 1 is equal to, OK, pure Laguerre will be 1 minus i, right? If you substitute to the formula, you will get it like here. For the Hermit situation, we have a different story because for the Hermit situation, we can make here this zero diagonal, but it's non zero. But since it's still by diagonal matrix, so the formula will be similar. There's some um, uh, jumps here. So for the Hermit, we'll have here 2j to j, two j, two j two i to i, and here it will be 2i to i plus 1. <laughs> <laughs> for even uh, for even polynomials, so actually formula is the same. So all orthogonal polynomials, classical, actually can be you know coefficient can be found from this matrix. Um, and even even multiple orthogonal polynomials. So for example, if we consider, well, just just for fun again, uh, for if you take for, uh, uh, multiple orthogonal polynomials from the work of Kalagin and uh, Rombo, okay. So well, the, the good case. So the good case was uh, they considered minus 1, 0, and uh, 0, 1. OK, so the parameter they considered is equal to minus 1. So we have differential equations, what, what they call classical polynomials, what they call in the paper. It looks like the x, the x cubed minus x, uh, third derivative plus 6x squared minus 2, the second derivative minus 3x, say, n minus 1, n plus 2 for the uh, first derivative. That was their differential operator. Well, it depends on n. So if we consider the matrix, only the last vector will be exactly the vector of coefficients of the polynomial. But it's OK. It's OK. So we have what? T, uh, well, it's exactly like in the, in the, in the situation of uh, uh, of Hermit, so we have t 2y 2i to i to i is equal to 2i times 4i uh, square plus 6i and minus 3n square minus 3n plus 2, for example, and t 2i 2i two plus 2 is equal to minus i plus 1 i plus 2 squared. It's OK. So the similar formula will give it because this polynomial will, will, will be, will be uh, symmetric. And for example, for the polynomial P2n, yeah, not, not to n, uh, when n, when, to, uh, when n is equal to 2, say, k, or maybe, I don't know, j. Yeah, k, j. So, the formula will be like this uh, for the for the coefficients. Okay, so for the coefficient, it will be like this. Uh, I will write like vectors to j to um, so, sorry to uh, yeah to j here to k will be equal to the product of exactly the same t to i to j to j minus t to i to i divided by 2i, 2i plus 2, i from 0 to uh, j minus 1. So if we substitute this, you will get exactly the coefficients. And in fact, it's, it, this means that such a, well, it's a kind of vision, so, but we can find formulas for all these polynomials if we know that differential operator, even for multiple. You see, multiple, these polynomials are not. Uh, not eigen, uh, eigenfunctions, right? So actually, probably the solution of some um, uh, more general, so not generalized eigenfunctions, like a uh, uh, so forgot the word. Yeah, pencil of pe pencil of uh, operators. But anyway, so it doesn't. I mean, <coughs> it, it, it actually it's not a problem. So we can find. Well, of course, we, did, didn't, uh, we didn't have yet. <laughs> but of course, if we have tri-diagonal matrix, four diagonal, of course, we can find a formula for coefficients. And then we can find formulas for coefficients of all these such solutions. 
Okay. So I think that's it. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, are there any questions? Sasha, you have a question? Yes. Exceptional. The exceptional polynomials using this uh, approach. Sure, sure. It's, it's another funny situation. You should consider generalized eigenvalue problem if if you want to to to, to work with polynomial coefficients. Yeah. So exceptional will just uh, we will have just generalized means. Uh, uh, well, here, all right. Say L R U is equal to lambda. I don't know b. Uh, B something, okay, U. So generalized, B is also operator. Yeah, sure. Also, interesting thing, if you just consider matrices, well, uh, again, and the cut for the operator with second order here, second order here, first order, or three and two, you, the matrix will be tried again on matrix for Han polynomials and for Raka polynomials, okay? <coughs> Paco, you also had a question? Yes, I have uh, some small question. When, uh, Misha, you introduce uh, the polynomial solutions of a second order differential operator, mm -hmm. in the case of uh, the quadratic polynomial, you consider x squared, that means Bessel, you consider x1 minus x, that means Jacobi, yeah. But I think it's also possible to have 1 plus x squared. That means Romanowski polynomials. Yeah, sure, but it's a, it's a general situation, of course. It's a, sure. So from algebraic point of view, if you just f forget about the uh, orthogonality measure, so the situation is, so because Bochner himself he didn't pose anything about the Orthogonality, just infinite sequence yeah. of polynomials. So actually, yes, it's included, of course. You see, here. But for Romanowski, we have problems here. You see, because uh, if you substitute for example one minus x squared, it's okay, it's good, and we, we, we are here. But if one plus x squared, so we are here somewhere. So Romanowski will be just one of this situation. But the good situation. So everything is okay, you know. So we, we do not need to have a block. Romanovsky. Yeah. Yet. Okay. And then my second comment deals with the fact that you can factorize the second order differential operator in terms of two first order differential operators. And then you can consider, uh, say, the, com the commuter. And this is the natural way to generate uh, exceptional orthogonal polynomials. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay? That means. Uh, I think it's related with the question by, by Andre. That yeah. means, in one hand, you have a, not a sequence of polynomials such that the degree is exactly n for every n, but you have gaps. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then, this kind of gaps is a very recent result by uh, David gomez Ullate and uh, Garcia Ferrero that show that every family of exceptional orthogonal polynomials are given as the uh, root gram the, uh, the yeah. iteration of the root gram factorization yeah. of classical. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I, I I found it excellently before before I read the paper. For, for Hermit polynomials. So that's why I know, but in fact, we have uh, generalized eigenvalue problems. So actually, it was some accident discovery, but then, then I, I read paper by, by David. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it's still, still working. It's, uh, you know, it just was explanation how we work on this uh, problem. But in fact, we have a bunch of results generalizing some Colagero results and some other guys already on matrices, OK? on uh, eigenvalue problems for matrices, and also for, for operators, too. So actually, it's uh, <coughs> such kind of work. So for pen tied diagonal matrices, for tri diagonal matrices, and et cetera, et cetera. The only situation is really not good yet, actually not studied. It's, a, it's my favorite example, because 
here, here, we don't know eigenvalues yet. So the matrix in this situation is tri-diagonal of this form. Here we have 1, 2, et cetera, n. Here we have n square, n minus 1 square, 4, and 1, OK, and zeros. So tri-diagonal matrix. It's not a Sylvester Katz matrix. It's a, some kind of different matrix in this situation, tri-diagonal. And we don't know its eigenvalues yet. We know for sure that these uh, eigenvectors are orthogonal because it's a standard situation, so you can multiply by by a function and just symmetrize it. So orthogonality is <laughs> is Hermitian, but eigenvalues are not known yet. I think that it's possible to find, but we did, didn't okay. actually didn't and it, and it too, I didn't take to solve this problem yet because we had some other problems to solve before. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have to stop here because it's time. So let's thank the speaker once more.